Imagine being a woman, and then at night you just feel like. Wait, wait, it's gonna take a while. I gotta to be a be woman. Hard. It's hard to imagine being a woman. <laughs> Give me a sec. All right, I'm there. I think it's gonna take longer than that. <laughs> <laughs> um, you're just laying there at night, and all of a sudden you feel like, and there's no stimulation going on. But all of a sudden, you feel like you're about to have the big O. You feel the tinglys. You feel the tinglys. And not for a minute, not for like half an hour. We're talking about hours. And you can't figure out why. Okay, we're going to get to that here in just one second. Because we have Brooke with us again, who is always so good. Brooke Fraught is the director for Women's Institute for Sexual Health in Nashville. Hey, Brooke. Hello, good morning. Let's give her credit. She went to school for a very long time. It is Dr. Brooke Fraught. <laughs> it's very confusing. I'm a nurse practitioner with a doctorate degree, so nobody knows what to call me. <laughs> Are you one of those people that said, when they say Miss or Mrs., you're like, that's doctor? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, not at all. <laughs> well, you should. You should. You earned it. All right. So only, only to my kids. <laughs> before we get into this specific email that I want to read to you, so I pay for a podcast to get bonus material on a podcast, and this podcast that I'm listening to, um, three of the hosts on this podcast haven't had sex in January at all. No, Zero. we're saying this year. We're making this it sound year. really bad. They haven't had it this year, okay? At what point should the host say to these guys, like, hey, you know what? It's just not healthy. You guys got to get this thing done. <laughs> Oh, there's there's a lot of factors that go into that sort of thing. <laughs> you know, you, you never want to uh, to force a, a recommendation upon somebody uh, given unique circumstances. So it, it takes a lot of uh, conversation before you have a conversation like that. The host, as I was reading on this podcast, this bonus uh, content, is really nervous that their parts are going to fall off <laughs> <laughs> because they haven't used them at all in this year. Is there any evidence that that actually happens? Well, there is honestly more so with uh, with women that kind of use it or lose it. And when I say lose it, it doesn't mean <laughs> things are going to fall off, but rather it's kind of out of sight, out of mind. No, I've but, seen it. I've seen it. Like this woman was walking a- across a crosswalk and then she, it just fell in the middle of the street. <laughs> Ma'am, did you drop this? <laughs> <laughs> did you give it back, Bert? <laughs> no, then some guys came by with like um, brooms and just swept it. <laughs> I didn't really know what it was. They just swept it to the side. It's, it's, not the gutter. In the it's still out there. It's in the gutter. It, that's not littering. Is that considered littering? <laughs> if you leave it there, yes. <laughs> it's biodegradable. <laughs> Doctor Fott, I am so sorry. You have we have subjected you to this. I, I work. I work in urology. I, I basically work with a bunch of twelve-year-old boys all day. No worries. Yeah. Well, then this, that's this, us. This, you are, yeah, yeah, this is our environment here. All right, uh, that podcast I'm talking about, that bonus content, is the Bird Show stuff, and that's how we kick it off every week now with a real. Really depressing update from both Mo and Kristen and Davi. Um, all right, so let's get to this email here. She says, Bert Show, I'm too embarrassed to talk to my doctor about this, so I'm asking you guys. Um, it's happened a few times every month since my hysterectomy in 2020. I can be in bed any given night when I awake to feel some warmth, warmth, throbbing, a little tangling in my lady bits, she says. Then it feels like it's on fire. Uh, she says, I'm not horny, nor am I turned on and wanting to play any damn instrument, much less a piano, which is our way when we have kids listening of saying sex. So she's not even frisky. She doesn't want to have sex, but there she is, and she's like on the brink of this thing. She says, it's like being on the brink of a big O for hours on end. The only way I can get it to stop is to take a sleeping pill. It normally happens in bed at night when I'm sleeping. It did happen once in a yoga class. That is an impressive downward dog you're doing there. Damn. <laughs> uh, I had to pack up. We had a woman on one time that said it happened while she was in a bus, and they went over like a couple of potholes. Mm-hmm. And she said it happened right there in the back of the bus. Uh, I what had street to- is that again? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Give me the latitude and longitude. <laughs> I got to go for a drive after work. <laughs> I'm going to go in reverse and I'm going to go forward and I'm going to go in reverse. <laughs> Sorry. So she says it did happen once in yoga class and I had to pack up my stuff and leave the class. I've taken care of myself thinking that would fix it, but to no avail. My boyfriend and I have a very healthy and plentiful sex life. Literally, 
Just my lady bits having a total weird meltdown for no reason I can pinpoint. So this cannot be normal, right? Is what she says. So, Dr. Brooke, um, what do you what do you got? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so ready for Debbie Downer here? Yeah. <laughs> yeah this, is, this is a real medical condition, and Ooh. I like how she, not I like, but um, I noticed how she started out by saying, I'm embarrassed to talk to my doctor, and we hear this all the time. You know, it, it is. It's embarrassing to bring up intimate matters, especially something that seems so, uh, you know, abnormal. Uh, but there is a condition referred to as uh, PGAD, or Persistent Genital Arousal Disorder, and it can occur in men and women. Uh, typically occurs more so in women or reported more in women uh, where there's this unwanted, unwarranted, unprovoked sensation of arousal um, or as she's describing, tingling, uh, you know, pulsing, that sort of thing. And uh, well, it sounds like a, a fantasy to some people, it's actually really incredibly intrusive and bothersome. Uh, I've had multiple patients with this exact condition where, uh, you know, people that are in high profile professional positions where they're having unwanted, unprovoked orgasms in the middle of, you know, giving a presentation or whatnot. Here they are trying to uphold this professional demeanor. Uh, So it's really, really uh, incredibly bothersome. There's a very, very high suicide rate in this population because uh, women don't, or individuals don't tend to seek the proper care. And when they do, unfortunately, a lot of providers are not familiar with this. So it's either kind of brushed off or uh, not properly dealt with. And so uh, women and men are, are kind of left to, to deal with it themselves. And it is so incredibly bothersome that it leads to just kind of a spiraling type of effect in some cases. So there's a big push in the sexual health community to learn more, to research more. There have been a couple of big publications and uh, pursuits to, to understand more about this condition and get the word out. There's actually a couple of support groups, even on uh, like Facebook and some social media accounts. Um, But all that to say, this is legit, what Mm. she's experiencing. Uh, We think it might be tied in with either some, uh, knowing that she had surgery, uh, some musculoskeletal issues, probably impacting the nerve function and just sending abnormal nerve signals to the region of the genitals. Sometimes there can be spinal problems. Sometimes it's medication. Uh, There's a whole slew of different possibilities that can cause this. So what's the next step for her to try to rectify it? speak to her provider. And unfortunately, it is true that her provider may not have the answers for her, but it is the first step. Um, My best suggestion is to go to uh, the ISWISH website, which is I-S-S-W-S-H. That stands for the International Society for the Study of Women's Sexual Health. And there's a find a provider link. And for the most part, people within that organization are going to be familiar with this organization or with this condition. There's actually a couple of public publications and manuscripts that detail this uh, condition, and that might be a starting point where she can print off some info to bring to her provider. But start the conversation. She may also benefit from some pelvic floor physical therapy if she has that in her area, somebody that can kind of assess the, the pelvic floor and see if uh, maybe the muscles of um, her hips, pelvis, back might be impacted from that surgery uh, that could explain some of her symptoms. Avi? For someone that's, like, embarrassed to bring this up to their doctor, I mean, do you start with, like, it's not you, it's me, I'm not really turned on by your stethoscope, like, how do you begin that conversation with your doctor without feeling, like, really in your head about it? Yeah, well, if you think about, this is what we do all day, every day, especially if you're going to see, you know, a gynecologist, a urologist, or even, you know, primary care, we talk about intimate, you know, quote, uncomfortable matters all day, every day, and uh, what makes one person uncomfortable might be nothing to the next person but really for the most part if we've been in practice for a bit of time which i've been in practice almost 20 years and it's we've kind of seen and heard it all so you it really takes a lot to surprise us trust me trust me Uh, i bet (laughs) but yeah so so just be honest you know just just say it as it is these these are the symptoms i'm having you know i'm not i'm not causing this to happen you know do you have any thoughts or suggestions or can you help direct me on uh, finding somebody that can help me if, you, if you're not familiar with this. Nice. I, I think it's uh, important to point out, while this, you know, who's to say what's normal, while this is not typical, it is legit. So don't let anybody discredit what you're going through and find somebody who will do something about it. Doctor, you're always so good when you join us. I really appreciate your time. Absolutely. That Thanks is, so much. That is Doctor. Doctor yes. Brooke Fox <laughs> from yeah, she is the director for Women's Institute for Sexual Health. Look, if you want her help, certainly you could reach out to her directly. Uh, if you want to go through us, then hit us up at thebirdshow.com. The Bird Show.